may be seated. As we gather together today, that I don't know that this is the place that any of us would necessarily want to be or choose to be, but we need to be. And so thank you for coming. But on top of that, as we gather together, the main purpose that we're here for is to worship our God. And within the context of that worship, that we will also remember the life of, of Brenda O'Kelly. We'll come to her and think of her, but within that context. And as we gather together, we also remember that there are lots of emotions here right now. There is some grieving. There is some tears. There is some relief. There's a lot of love. That's one of the things that brings you here. And so as we gather together and we think about all these things, that we are able once again to turn to the Word of God. And so often as we come to the Word of God, we study it, we analyze it, we um, pick it apart a little, we preach from it. But as we come today, we can also use it just to find comfort, 
and just allow it to, to come over us. And so as we do that, we, uh, we come to a psalm, a very familiar psalm of Psalm 23. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Another passage that uh, the, the family uh, particularly wanted. From Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And as we turn to the passage from Jeremiah 29, 11, the, the family said, this is a good verse. She was a planner. And so this just reminded them of the fact that she, I don't know, planned everything? Yes, they said yes. <laughs> for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. We can tie those together with uh, a passage that Jesus is giving to his disciples as he is talking to them about the fact that he's leaving. And as he does, we come to John chapter 14 in the first six verses that in the middle of, of that discussion, that this is what Jesus tells them, and we can say that he tells us as well. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And finally, a, a passage of incredible hope that if we, when we turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, that in this passage, these are written to people that were experiencing very intense persecution. But in the middle of all of that, Peter is able to write, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. This is the word of the Lord. Those who are able will ask you to please stand and as we sing uh, the next hymn of How Great Thou Art using the words that are in your bulletins. Kind of. What? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> and the, this, this um, recording has the first verse, the second verse, then the chorus, then the third verse, just so you don't get lost. my 
up our own version. Well, we're here. Again, I would say it's not the place that we would choose to spend a Wednesday afternoon. But we need to be here. But at the same time, as we take a look at, at various things, especially at the scripture passages, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Psalm 23 is arguably one of those passages that shows up at funerals and at memorial services almost more than any other. We hear it a lot, for good reason, that as we come together and we hear the words of that psalm, that uh, they are reassuring. There's a certain gentleness, there's a certain, assure, um, um, just that assurance, there's a certain calmness and peace to it, of that God is present no matter what. As I sat with the family yesterday and talked and, and they told me more and more about Brenda, this psalm kind of fits her. You find a, a person who was gentle, who was went out, who loved, who cared for people. And so you kind of hear that within the words. It sort of, it, it fits. 
But at the same time, as you're reading through Psalm 23 and you get to some parts, it also refers to some of the worst times in our lives. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and that even there, God is very present, even in the middle of that. And we come to a day like this and we say, this is one of those times when I need God. I need him for many reasons, including I need someone to restore my soul. I need that. And in the words of Psalm 23, we also know that with God, we experience a goodness and a love that... It is better than anything that you're ever going to find on this earth or in this life. That the goodness and a love of God is so much better and so much more solid, so much more permanent. But you finally arrive at the last line of that song. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you, when you arrive there, that's a great place. I don't know that David was necessarily thinking about setting up housekeeping in the tabernacle or in the temple, or if the temple hadn't been built yet, but, but he, I don't know that he was setting, calling, thinking of setting up housekeeping there or, or anything like that. He's talking to about a much greater house, about going on where he's going to live there forever in the presence of the Lord, that that is such a, a great thing for him, and that we come along and we hear those words, but that we hear that hope. And we talk about, uh, you know, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we put that together with what Jesus tells his disciples in John 14. You know, as we're talking about living in the house of the Lord forever, that I may dwell there. And that in my father's house are many rooms. And that Jesus said, I am going there and I'm preparing a place for you. And that we can have that incredible assurance that that is what's going on. That Brenda is in that house and she's going to dwell there forever. That she's there. Now, I have to admit to you that I don't really know exactly what it's all going to be like. I have no idea if the streets are really gold or if there's pearly gates or anything else. But there's one thing I know for sure. It's going to be really, really good. And she's in the middle of that right now. She's experiencing that for one and only one reason. And we read about that in another passage that we looked at earlier of First Peter, that it's because when we look at all of that, she has placed her faith in Christ. And that now she has a new birth into a living hope. I know we come here and we talk about that somebody has, we use all kinds of, of phrases and words, passed away, gone to a better place, gone to be with the Lord. You know, she's died. And when we use that, when we say that, we say, but wait a minute. She is experiencing a living hope. And that's where we put our hope at this very moment, that she's experiencing that living hope and that she is enjoying an inheritance that is kept in heaven for her. It's an inheritance that if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, you have it right now. It's there at this moment. It's in a place. It's in heaven. It's, it's, uh, it's something that it's never going to be stolen. It can't be taken. It's not going to spoil. It's not going to fade. It's not going to waste away. It's in a place where nothing on, in this life or on this earth can touch. It's kept in heaven. And that's the best part, that she is experiencing and realizing that inheritance right now. And she is living in a living hope. And so as we, we take a look at that, Inevitably, though, we're still going to have memories, and we should. We should hold on to those memories. We should keep them. And in the, I don't know, the hours ahead today, the weeks, even the years ahead, those memories are going to come up. I don't know what memories you'll have. Memories about her painting, cooking, the precious time that she spent at White Lake. She... Uh, had that smile and that presence. And I learned yesterday, she also had an eyebrow. 
and you didn't want it aimed at you, <laughs> from what I understand. But she had all of that, and those will come out in those memories that you're going to talk about. That's what's going to happen. And as all of that takes place, and uh, the day will come when you'll be reunited with the love of your life. That if I heard it correctly yesterday, she's been the love of your life for 67 years, and you've been married to her for 64 of those. Did I get that right? 64 and 62. Oh, 64 and 62, okay. Well, I'm pretty close. But that's a precious memory. That's a precious blessing for you. And so as we come and we realize all of that, that, that there will be the day when you go to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. She's already got it ready. She's waiting. But until that day, we come along, and this is one of those rare times right now that we think about what I like to refer to as the what's next. That after this life, there is a what's next. There is something after this life. It's unmistakable. A person can try to ignore it or deny it, but there's too much evidence even for us here that it's there. There's a what's next. And so when we come to that what's next, the question for us now is, do you have an inheritance in heaven right now? Do you have that inheritance? Is it kept in heaven for you? Do you have an absolute certainty that the day will come when you're going to go and dwell in the house of the Lord forever? Are you looking forward to that day that you know it's coming? We can't get around it. So do you have that inheritance? You can answer that question, but at the same time, we know that it's available for all through Jesus Christ. And so when we come, we know that Jesus has prepared a place for Brenda. We know that he has prepared a place for everyone who recognizes him as the only way to the Father. That Jesus prepares a place for everyone who, who looks to him for the only truth that restores our soul. That Jesus prepares a place for all who recognize him as the only life that never ends. And he makes it available for all of us. And so when we come, we know this one certainty, this one reality through Jesus Christ, we have a goodness and a love that will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Our Lord, as we come before you, we are in your presence. We worship you. We lift up your name and glorify you for what you give us as a part of, of the assurances of your Holy Spirit, of the life that we have to look forward to, that, Lord, that we would not look at it with fear, but that we would look at it with excitement. Lord, that you have prepared a place for us, and we know that. And we thank you for the fact that it's Jesus Christ who has prepared it and that he takes us there. But Lord, we also know that there, is, um, there are broken hearts, there is grieving. Some of the memories, Lord, we know are going to lead to tears as well as laughter. You know that, Lord, because you know that you created us to be people that love. And that that love doesn't end just because Brenda is no longer here with us. We continue to love her. And that may be the one thing that breaks our hearts, that she's not here. But at the same time, Lord, we thank you for the knowledge and of, the, of the promise you have for us through Christ. And so as we lift up the day here, I pray for the family. I pray for friends. I pray for, for those around us at this very moment that, Lord, that we can lift them up to you and come to you. And know just how blessed we truly are. 
Lord, we thank you for your presence at this time and in this place, not just in this room, but Lord, that your presence fills our hearts and our souls. How much we need that, how much we need it to, to be that you are the one who restores our souls and that you lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. That you take us, and Lord, we thank you for, again, the knowledge that you have blessed us so richly. Help us to hold on to those blessings in a way that this world can never take from us. And so, Lord, we come to you and we lift up all of this. We lift up our day. We lift up our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thy And now as we go out from here, we go out in the love of the Father, in the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.